Welcome in to Drew's Daily Diamond College Football Edition for Saturday, October 12th. I am Drew Martin breaking down the slate of games. Got some big time matchups coming your way. Red River rivalry. We got Ohio State, Oregon in the Big Ten matchup from Eugene, Oregon. We got something here in South Florida as well as the show, guys. 17 and 5, 77% run heading into the weekend. That's plus 11 units of profit. We're breaking it down now. Let me know in the chat box or actually in the comments below. Uh, recording the show here, comments below where you agree, where you disagree, what you're looking to bet on the Saturday slate. A monster card here in college football for week seven. All is welcome in the comments below. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. All right, first game up, big time matchup here. We'll hit the big one first. We're heading out west, 730 Eastern, 430 Pacific on NBC. It's the Oregon Ducks hosting the Ohio State Buckeyes. Buckeyes, minus three-point road favorites, 54 being the total. Oregon riding a 31-1 and home run here. They've actually only lost two games in Autzen Stadium in the last five seasons. So if you're looking to go against the Ducks, you're going against some sh strong trends there. Now, if you're looking to go on Ohio State, hey, they, look, they have looked good out the gate. Number one ranking defense by yards per play, yards per game. Um, so they could go on the road, you know, defense travels here, obviously going off as the favorite. Now, looking at both quarterbacks here, Howard, the quarterback for Ohio State, you know, decent numbers overall. Gabriel as well for Oregon. I think Gabriel gives a little bit more. Dylan Gabriel, the uh, transfer from UCF, gives a little bit more, you know, explosiveness to the offense to hit some big plays. We'll see how it works out here in Eugene. Oregon also on a 10 and 4 straight up and against the and against the spread run hosting top 10 conference foes not sure how much we can bring that in because you know going from the pac 12 to the big 10 but still big time matchups they've done well against the spread also one more trend here on this big 10 teams traveling two plus time zones have not fared well just one in eight straight up it's happened nine times so far this season one in eight traveling two time zones or more in the Big Ten Conference with the expansion. And offensively, the road team averaging just 15 points and less than 300 yards on offense. All of that putting us on the home dog here, guys. I think Oregon's barking. I think they might win outright, but plus three in our pocket to start us off here. That one going, what, 4.30 p.m. Pacific on NBC. Got a client play up next, and it's in the North Texas Florida Atlantic game, the hoo, 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 owls of FAU at home here in Boca Raton, hosting the mean green from North Texas. We get a 58 and a half as the total in this one, guys. And both teams in the top 40 in the national rankings in terms of pace of play. I like to go off of seconds per snap, meaning how many seconds are you running off in between snaps? Well, both of them top 40 nationally. So we're going to get a ton of plays in Boca Raton on Saturday night. This is 7 o'clock Eastern start there in FAU Stadium. Add on, add on the fact that FAU is off of a bye week, and they've been working in their new redshirt uh, quarterback here, transfer from Colorado. He obviously wasn't getting playing time behind uh, Sanders there. He actually transferred to FAU. And out the gate, they had the transfer from Marshall come in. I believe he's a senior. So now a couple games in, they're giving the young kid a chance. I think he's going to be taking more chances down the field. Plus, they're off of a bye week, you know, under Ton Herman to get, to kind of coach him up a little bit. I could see FAU taking some more chances. And, of course, North Texas, the mean green, if you watch them at all, they're all offense. You know, uh, pedal to the metal, all, all gas, no brakes type of deal. They're 4-0 and to the over versus FBS opponents. And – Kind of compare that with FAU, you know, they, they have started to make the shift here in their in their last game, but they're also 2-0 to the over against their FBS opponents. So lately, FAU is a team that played against Army, you know, they, they, they got killed in that game, but it's always tough to get something going against Army and Army running the option on the other side. So since then, they've been a whole lot better offensively. And last thing here, I mean, North Texas bring in the, you know, all gas, no breaks. That mean green defense has not been all that mean this year. So I think the Owls will be able to score some points, too. We know North Texas is going to get theirs. Does look like weather, you know, a little bit of rain and some wind in the forecast. But that's pretty much South Florida weather this time of year, no matter what. So I think it holds off. We're going up and over 58 and a half 
FAU in North Texas in the AAC matchup. Got another one for you here. Washington State in Fresno State. This one going primetime as well in the Valley. Looks like Washington State minus three in the hook. The Cougars as the road favorite. I have this Fresno State Bulldogs team as fade city right now, guys. I saw, you know, we, we if you watch the, the game against UNLV, UNLV, I think, put up like 59 points. They were flirting with 60 points in that game. And Fresno State only scored two touchdowns. We've now seen this UNLV defense face a bunch of offenses that have really struggled this year, you know, whether it be Kansas or Houston. And then when they faced an, an offense that was competent just last week against Syracuse, uh, they let up a bunch of points. Well, they held Fresno State to just two touchdowns. And now Fresno State is going up against the Washington State team that's already beat Washington in the Apple Cup. They also beat Texas Tech. The Red Raiders offenses look good. They beat them both as underdogs. So I know a lot of people don't like to lay three and a hook, which is what it is across the board. There's no threes out there. And I don't recommend kind of buying a half a point in college football really at all in sports betting. So I'm not going to buy it down. But minus three and a half, a lot of people shy away with from that unless it lands three. Of course, it always could. Anything could happen in sports betting. But... Guys, I, I don't think so. I think Washington State wins, you know, kind of going away here. You know, maybe even an alt line, something like that. I think there's a huge talent disparity here. The Cougars off of uh, the bye week uh, already talked about, you know, the schedule differences. It's all Cougars here in the Valley. So we are on Washington State minus three and a half. Got time for one more here. Drew's Daily Diamond going Saturday's college football edition. Got the Sunday NFL show coming up as well guys if you're into betting nfl football let's end it with a big one here texas and oklahoma also a reminder check out premium picks wagertalk.com got the college football slate up for the clients we got nfl slate up up and going two for one in the nfl three for one in college football for this weekend in the all-inclusive college basketball college football nfl major league baseball plays you get them all with the all-inclusive through the rest of the season drew martin over 500 dollars off of that special available now so check it out wagertalk.com all right big time matchup red river rivalry texas and oklahoma from the cotton bowl texas state fair here it is the longhorns minus 14 in the hook total of 50 texas won in 2022 49 nothing oklahoma came back Beat him 34-30 last year. Both teams off of a bye, heading into the SEC. That's the old SEC trick. Get your bye week before your rival. This is the biggest Texas has been favored since 2005, the year they won the national championship, the confetti coming down on Vince Young. That was the last time the Longhorns were two touchdown favorites. Now, Oklahoma, something I think that, that might have the dog barking a bit. Their quarterback, Hawkins, freshman, played against Auburn in Jordan-Hare. Tough place to play. Then had a bye week. I like that aspect, guys. Um, having the young kid have a bye week after game action. Usually look for a little bit better quarterback performance. And I think we get that out of Oklahoma. Add on the fact the Oklahoma defense holding opponents to 91 yards less than their average. I love that stat. You know, what has the offense has done against other, against other defense? And then compare that to what your defense held them to. Well, Oklahoma's has fared very well. We saw it in the Tennessee game against a pretty good Tennessee offense, holding them at bay. So, guys, that's going to do it for the Saturday show. Hey, if you like the content, smash that like button, comment below. We're keeping the 17 and 5, 77% run going, plus 11 units this past week for the show, guys. So, uh, thanks for tuning in. Hey, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Come back, see the, uh, the NFL show as well for Sunday. I'm Drew Martin checking out. Enjoy your weekend. Cash those tickets.